Good evening again, and uh, welcome to uh, the segment here that I've been uh, broadcasting for the last couple of weeks. I'm Dadichi from astrology.com.au. Uh, I, I must have been I'm a little annoyed this week. I've, you know, fortunately had many people contacting me regarding some of the uh, video blogs and uh, comments that I'm making through the video channel here, both on my site and on YouTube, but uh, this week I've had a couple of skeptics, which that's fine, I've got nothing against skeptics, I've had a few skeptics that have frustrated me, because you know, skeptics want absolute empirical proof for everything that, that is stated by an astrologer, and in a couple of cases this week I've, I've you know, I've, I've given these people a bit of latitude and I've basically emailed them back uh, with what I thought were a couple of reasonable studies by university um, professors, people who have done statistical studies, and these studies have been completely unacceptable to them. Uh, yet, uh, one of them, I must say, <laughs> referred to one other study. So I don't quite grasp why one study is quotable and another is not. Uh, look, the, the point of this is, uh, of course, astrology is not going to be able to, in 100% of cases, predict accurately. But uh, look, just from my own studies here, I just wanted to point out that now, firstly, I've done around uh, 9,000 readings in, in, in 25 years. I have a collection of around eight, eight to 9,000 horoscopes. Uh, I'm fascinated by the many, many different patterns that emerge when you start to look at this. And have I done a statistical analysis of these horoscopes to come up with my findings? No, I haven't. But let me say this. If uh, we you know, applied the statistical analysis to something like seismology, or let's just take uh, weather reporting. Uh, if, if weather uh, meteorologists observed a black cloud coming over the horizon and suggested that this might produce rain, uh, yeah, it many, on many occasions the black cloud would produce rain. It doesn't always produce rain. Uh, and that's the point I'm making. Uh, not even science is capable of getting 100% accuracy. You could apply the statistical analysis to, to that, and I'm sure you'd find there are yeah, there are exceptions, there are anomalies in any science. Here, basically, I uh, sent back some some of my findings to uh, one of these skeptics. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, with, for ex uh, for example, psych psychopathy, psychopaths, serial murderers, soldiers, generals. What I've noticed, and I'll just give you a few of them. Jeffrey Dahmer, the uh, famous serial killer. Moon in Pisces, conjoined to Mars, in the right angle to Saturn. Gacy, another serial killer. Moon in Pisces, sextile to Mars. Ramirez, serial killer. Moon in Pisces, 60 degrees to Mars, right angle to Saturn. Berkowitz, in the ninth harmonic chart, Moon in Pisces, conjunct Mars, opposite to Saturn. Ted Bundy, the very famous serial killer, Moon in Scorpio, conjoined with Mars. Paul Bernardo, the ninth harmonic moon, in opposition to Mars. Charles Ng, Mars, in opposition to Saturn. And the ninth harmonic chart, Mars in Pisces, at a right angle to the moon. Adolf Hitler, we all know of Hitler, mass murderer, right? Mars at a right angle to Saturn, opposite to his ascendant. Okay, I agree, these may not be statistical findings, but wouldn't any open scientific minded person say, hey, let me think here, there's a lot of similarities emerging here in groups of different types of people. In this case, serial killers, would we not be warranted in maybe at least keeping an open mind, an open heart, and investigating this a little bit more? Okay, let's say for argument's sake, astrology is bunkum. I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying, let's assume it is. Surely, these similar, similar patterns that continually emerge would warrant at least a little more investigation. I ask this skeptic, what studies have you done? Don't quote me other studies, what have you actually studied? How many horoscopes have you looked at for you yourself to come up with the conclusion that this is a whole lot of BS? Okay. 
Here are a few more famous fighters. Muhammad Ali had Saturn and Mars conjoined at the midheaven. Douglas MacArthur had the moon in Cancer at a right angle to Mars. Saddam Hussein was born with the moon conjoined to Mars in Scorpio. Benito Mussolini was born with the moon, Mars and Saturn all together in Taurus. Australia's famous fighter Jeff Fennec was born with the moon in Scorpio opposite to Mars and in a 60 degree or sextile aspect to Saturn. Another famous boxer in the 60s here in Australia was a, a fighter called Lionel Rose. Moon was at the uh, square or right angle to Mars in the triangular aspect to Saturn. Jackie Chan, the stage actor and fighter, has Moon in Gemini opposite Mars in triangular position to Saturn. And Bruce Lee was born with the Moon in Scorpio with Mars opposite Saturn. Okay, again I repeat, these may not be statistical findings, but the way I look at it is, hey, there's something going on here. We get repeated patterns. And this, in any scientific method, is based firstly and foremost upon observation. And then studying that and repeating that over hundreds and thousands of cases, which, as I said to this skeptic, I have done in many, 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 many cases. There are exceptions, but in 85% of children whose horoscopes I look at with similar patterns to this, I can, I can tell generally that these kids are going to be fighters. They're going to be aggressive to some extent, and I usually advise the parents that there are certain natural and uh, positive outlets such as martial arts, boxing, that will help them um, direct this energy productively. One of the other things I said to this skeptic uh, was that, look, you know, I've been looking at the NASA side. Oh, okay, NASA, scientific organization, well respected. I, I, I want to quote you what they actually said here. And at least these people are a little more open-minded than some of the skeptics that have been writing to me. Even though they themselves may not believe in astrology, they are remaining open. Here, let me quote what they say in the Living with a Star program. We live in an extended atmosphere of an active star. While sunlight enables and sustains life, the sun's variability produces streams of high-energy particles and radiation that can affect life. Under the protective shield of its magnetic field and atmosphere, the Earth is an island in the solar system where life has developed and flourished. The origins and fate of life on Earth are intimately connected to the way the Earth responds to the sun's variations. Understanding the changing sun and its effect on the solar system, life and society is the goal of the Sun-Earth Connection theme. That's NASA uh, to you skeptics, remaining a little bit open-minded. Perhaps you need to get with the program and open your minds a little bit, even if you don't necessarily believe in astrology, and yes, accept that there is a link here with, with the planetary and solar energies and terrestrial life. Finally, in today's, um, as you can see, rather uh, passionate blog, uh, I'd like to finish with the words of one of history's most noble, famous and brilliant scientists, Albert Einstein. I'll quote him. The most beautiful and deepest experience a man can have is the sense of the mysterious. It is the underlying principle of religion as well as all serious endeavour in art and science. He who never had this experience seems to me, if not dead, then at least blind. To sense that behind anything that can be experienced there is something that our mind cannot grasp and whose beauty and sublimity reaches us only indirectly and as a feeble reflection this is religiousness. In this sense I am religious. To me it suffices to wonder at these secrets and to attempt humbly to grasp with my mind a mere image of this lofty structure of all that there is. That's well worth thinking about. Thanks for joining me again. Hope to see you soon.